Oh, all right, in this Academy video, I believe part 13, we're gonna be pretty technical, pretty deep. Um, so if you're not, you know, not really sat down, focused, and uh, maybe have actually a notebook or something to take notes with, I'd wait on this video and come back to another time. Um, this was a little bit deeper in terms of, you know, understanding the search auction as a general um, and going into some confidential stuff that Google has released uh, publicly now um, in midst of their current lawsuit <laughs> at them, which is good for us as advertisers, right? Kind of see how does the black box work of Google and how can we, you know, use that as a competitive advantage over our, you know, our competitors and make sure we understand Google as much as possible to really take advantage of that and to gamify it in our favor. So let's get to it. So some main notes before we really break into it, right, is focus on relevancy over all other things. You only pay for clicks, not impressions in the search auction. And every search is another auction perform, right? You don't just get one auction per day or one auction per week. Nope, every single search that happens that you're eligible to appear for, you will get uh, a rank and a score, and then you may be eligible or not, depending on that, right? Depending on quality factors, stuff like that. So that's gonna go top down and then work away into very technical parts of the auction process. Um, if you have questions, link them below. You probably will, um, just because it's I go deeper than just the normal you know quality score and ad rank stuff. I go into what that makes of it in you know LTV score and, and just stuff that you probably haven't heard about before from Google because it hasn't been publicly available um, until very recently. So how are search ads ranked and priced? So the process from very macro view is at the time of a search query, Google identifies a few hundred ads that are likely to be highly relevant to the user. Right? There's a keyword highly relevant. Always focus on relevancy at the end of the day. If you want to make sure your ad is best served to the people you want to serve it to, be relevant as possible for them so Google rewards you. Then Google sends these ads to a system known as the ad mixer internally to assign each of the ads a score. And that internally is called either ad score or long-term value score or LTV score, okay? So that's brand information that Google has not released publicly before. It's called ad score or long-term value score. And the process of doing that is looking at the expected revenue per cost of or per thousand impressions minus two things minus the impression cost which is low quality ad and minus the click cost the low quality post click experience so it's weighing your ad in terms of okay my expected google's expected revenue from you as the advertiser on you know how low how good of a quality of an ad is it will the user be happy to click on this then also what is the post -click, click post click experience is it really good for the user is it a good website will they actually can do what they want you is it well are they finding the information the products that they need post click right so google is going post click even with their google bot crawling your page seeing what's what you're offering stuff like that and they're going to weigh that to make sure hey are you good enough as a quality to even be shown in the ad right so make sure that's all all there then ads with with sufficiently high ad scores or ltv scores Okay, those that exceed quality thresholds, because Google does set a quality threshold for every single ad auction, and a lot of ads don't meet that, are eligible to appear in the SERP. So if you're eligible post ad quality, then you will then be ranked by your ad rank, right? If they meet the eligibility conditions and the quality uh, thresholds, they'll be ranked in order of those scores, high or low based on ad rank, right? Now, before we get into ad rank, let's first talk about quality score, which is the main, you know, everything is based off your of quality score. In terms of looking at Google's thing, because what is it? It's Google's internal auction score for relevance, right? There's another keyword, relevance, right? And it's usually known as three components. It's not, it's actually four. Um, again, this is another thing from Google's documents. So the main three that you've probably heard of, or if you're looking up on Google, you'll find these main three, is expected click through rate or ECTR, which is the likelihood that your ad will be clicked when shown. This is the most important quality metric within quality score for ad rank. Again, this is from Google's intern internal documents. So if you ever have a poor quality score, try to improve it, always focus first on expected uh, click-through rate. But big note here, which I hate when people say, oh, I have a, you know, how can I improve this? Well, it's harder to improve because even if you have a great click-through rate, let's say you have a 20% click-through rate, 50% click-through rate, and you still have a, you know, let's say one or two out of three here, it's expected. So even if you have great stuff, it will be weighed against other advertisers plus the history of that keyword. So if other advertisers suck at it, or that just the history of that keyword has been low click-through rate, Google doesn't expect a low click-through rate, which is gonna hurt your score. So think about that, right? If you can improve, you've been trying to improve it, it might, at the end of the day, it might be other competitors, it might not be as good or, or similar, or history of that keyword is tough. So think about that. Second thing is ad relevance, which is how closely your ad matches the intent behind a user search. Again, huge thing here, relevance. 
then landing page experience is how relevant and useful your landing page is to people who click your ad. Again, that goes back up to here for the click cost right here. And then it, and the ad relevance was the impression cost, right? Easy. Now, that's where most people think it stops, right? Those first three things. However, there's a fourth factor, which is other factors. So that includes devices used in search, location of the user, time of the day, assets, assets you have to make sure Google can dynamically create the best ad possible and the best ad relevant for that specific user. And also the Googlebot crawlers looking at your actual website, pages you have, the goal of the page, stuff like that. Now, the, the scoring system for quality score is based on a three. You have one, which is below average, two, which is average, and three is above average. And how is that scored? Based on other advertisers who have shown for the same keywords over the last 90 days. Keyword there, based on other competitors, as well as last 90 days. It's not an exact timing metric. It's not that day you looked at it. It's not that week that you looked at it. It's based on historical impressions for exact searches of that keyword. So what does that mean, right? If you have a broad map search term, which most of you probably will going forward on 2023, 2024, if you don't have a lot of exact map searches, you're going to have very either low quality score or not much quality score actually shown because you don't have enough exact map searches, right? So this is a major gripe. If you have an older PPC person you're working with and they expect this, it's not the same way anymore, right? Especially if you, even if it's an exact map search keyword, you don't have nearly the same amount of exact match search queries with that because of Google's matching process, which we will dive into. So that just keep that in mind. It's based on historical app for the last 90 days of that keyword against other advertisers, but it has to be exact matches. So if you have a one, one word broad match keyword that's working for you, but you have no quality score components, that's why, because you don't have enough exact match keywords of the last 90 days. Okay, so just always think about that. Um, so changing keyword matchups will not impact your quality score. It's based on impressions of the last 90 days. If you don't have any quality score data, which I just talked about, there may not be enough exact, exact mass searches to actually show that, that quality score. Again, why do we want higher quality score? You get lower CPCs, better SERP positions, which is search engine results page, and you get more assets and ad formats to kind of show and take up more real estate on the page. Now, ad rank. So quality score, if quality score at the end of the day, you know, is basically, you know, you want to think about this as, the internal score that Google will give you, right, on the, on the, on the public facing side, right? If that's the score Google is gonna go with, how, what is ad rank, right? So ad rank is a value that is used to determine your ad position and whether your ads will show at all, okay? It's calculated every for every ad in the auction, every single time, like I said before in the beginning of this thing, it's not just one per day or one per campaign, whatever. It's every single time your ad is eligible in the auction. And the most simple breakdown of this, again, this is not as advanced as it could be, the most simple breakdown is your max bid times your quality score, okay? The biggest lever usually is increasing bids if your ad rank is not high enough to show, and you can find that by looking at your search impression metrics. Um, usually the biggest thing is just bidding more to jack that up a little bit. Um, the actual breakdown, again, there's seven main factors from Google. Your bid, so again, I'm gonna run through this because this is really good stuff you guys need to know and study. Your bid, so when you say your bid, you're telling Google Ads the max amount you're willing to pay for a click in your ad. How much you actually pay is often less, and you will continue to bid any time. Again, that could be either dynamically from smart bidding, or it can be manual. Then you have predict predictive creative quality, PCQ, slash predictive landing page experience, PLQ. Again, this is kind of the quality score components, but within internals, Google's internal documentation. Google Ads also checks how relevant and useful your ad and website it links to are to the customer. Our assessment of the quality of your ad is sum summarized in the quality score, which you can monitor or work to improve. Then you have ad rank thresholds or reserve prices. This one's a fun one. <laughs> Basically, um, Google will set uh, thresholds. You must meet both create, uh, qualities as well as pay side to help ensure high quality ads. And uh, if you're the only advertiser in the auction, you will pay reserve price to actually showcase that ad. So even if you're, if you're the only one in the auction bidding a dollar, you're gonna pay something to be in the auction even though there's no one us below you. And it will get more to that in the future, um, but it's a fun thing to think about. Competitiveness of an auction, right? So two ads compete with the same position, have similar ad ranks. Each will have a similar opportunity to win that ad position. As the gap in ad rank between the two advertisers grows, the higher ranking ad will be more likely to win, but also may pay a higher cost per click to benefit the increased certainty of winning, right? So if there's more competitors in an auction, it's gonna be considered your ad rank. Context of the person search, this one is a huge one. Context, right? So when you calculate ad rank, we check the search terms the person has entered previously, the person's location at the time of the search, the type of device they're using, 
time of the search, nature of the search terms, other ads and other search results that show on the same page and other user, user signals and attributes, AKA the black box. So this is where the millions of data points on each single user and person they have in the, in the database is used. And this one is so big, right? So big that we don't have access to. So just always keep the back of your mind. Google is dynamic, not, not a search term I type in and you type in, you can go down the same, same location on different devices and have completely different search results just based on how we've searched in the past. What does Google know about us? Stuff like that. And that's why if you ever have like a, a client who says, Hey, I'm searching my brand name. It's not coming up. We'll get, I mean, there's a lot of components there, but if Google knows you type in a, a search over and over again, say your own brand, and you don't click on your ad because you're not going to spend your own money on yourself. Google's going to stop showing you that ad. It thinks that ad's not relevant for you. It's just going to stop showing you, even if you're eligible to see it. And that's what happens a lot of times right now. If people search for their own ads, usually it's not as bad anymore, but you still get some like local service based businesses or smaller businesses do that if they're newer to the game. So you got to walk them through that. Um, and then expected impact from your ads, assets, and formats. So when you create your ad, you have the option to add additional information to your ad, such as phone numbers, links to your specific pages on your site, price, prices, stuff like that. Um, these are called ad assets. So Google can then estimate how these assets and other ad formats you can use will impact your ad's performance. So in general, the more dynamic you give Google in terms of the more information you give, the more dynamic Google can be, giving that end user the best ad possible. And Google will reward you if you have more stuff they can actually give to Google. So that's why you always want to make sure you can maximize the assets you give Google. And then predictive click-through rate or PCTR or expected click-through rate on the, on the you know, public side, this likelihood that you're able to click to one shown. So that is ad rank at the end of the day. Um, there's ways to gamify this. I just want to really think about, and, you know, if you guys need to watch this again, I would. Main thing here, just really focusing on, you know, what is Google's goal, which is relevancy. Always focus on relevancy. But quality score, if you're trying to play the game of can we be as a good quality score as you want to be, you always want to have, you know, try to have a high quality score. But if your quality score suck or you just don't have enough information on it, think about, okay, is it historical based? Yes, it is. Am I using broader phrase match keywords? You probably are. That's probably why I'm getting a lot of search, exact match search queries. And that's my, that be, might be why your quality score is, you know, lower or you just don't have enough information to actually showcase a good quality score. Um, so yeah, that's uh, you know pretty technical here. I just want to really you know show you the ad auction at a dynamic level and technical enough where you can you know respect it more and start thinking okay how does this actually impact my ads when I run ads. So that is it for the search auction video.